Okay, so now let's get started. Thank you for coming to my presentation. And also I want to say thank you to the conference committee to invite me as a speaker. My name is Kai Sasaki. I'm from Tokyo, Japan. And in my presentation, I'm going to talk about the design of infrastructure for auto-scaling data analysis platform especially built on top of the public data, public cloud service like AWS. And please don't forget to post questions in Slido, if any. So at the beginning, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Kai Sasaki. Uh, I'm a software engineer working in ARM Treasure Data since 2015. <coughs> I've been working in Treasure Data for three years. And mainly I'm working in the maintaining big data infrastructure like Apache Hadoop, Presto, or Spark. So my expertise is mainly uh, distributed systems and database systems. And recently I'm also enthusiastic about the deep learning and machine learning. So. I'm keep contributing to the machine learning libraries like TensorFlow.js, which is a JavaScript binding of TensorFlow. And also I'm a committer of Apache HiveMore, which is a scalable machine learning library built on top of Apache Hadoop or Hive. And uh, regarding these projects, I also published several books on as a ebook or paperback. And Twitter account is here, so if you have any interest in my activity, please follow me. So this is the topic of this presentation. Uh, so first, I'm going to briefly introduce about the Treasure Data or company, who we are and what we are doing. And then I'm going to de define what is the distributed data analysis in this talk. Uh, what kind of requirement and what kind of feature this platform should have. And then uh, I'm going to introduce some challenges uh, to maintain this distributed data analysis in based on our experience in terms of operational cost and stability and scalability. And at the last and the main point of this talk, uh, I'm going to show some approaches to solve these challenges, uh, especially by using some of the technologies built on top of public uh, cloud services. So first, who is Treasure Data? So we are Treasure Data. Treasure Data is a company which is, was founded in December 2011 in Silicon Valley. The headquarter is located in Mountain View, California. Uh, and we are now providing several kind of data analysis solutions like private DMP and enterprise customer data platform or IoT on top of the cloud. And fortunately, uh, we are now acquired by ARM, uh, which is uh, famous for designing semiconductor chips, uh, which is located in the Cambridge. And now we are, provi we are providing the new IoT services, uh, which can be easily integrated with ARM chips. And as I said before, we are providing an end-to-end integrated data analysis platform by using the open source softwares like Hadoop or Presto. And by using Treasure Data, uh, you can ingest any kind of data format into our platform and at immediately you can use our platform to analysis on the your collected logs. And also we have provided several kind of service integrations with BI tools or marketing tools like Tableau or digital marketing tools like Marketo. So Treasure Data is a completed comprehensive data analysis platform, which is on top of cloud services. And also we are providing several kind of open source softwares. They are the sum of them. 
And the most famous one, I think, is Fluentd, which is a unified log collector. Um, and Fluentd is now a part of CNCF, Cloud Native Foundation project. But uh, the original, originally, we, are crea we created these four projects, Fluentd, Embark, DigDug, and HiveMore. So by using Fluentd and Embark, you can easily collect any kind of log format into any kind of storages like MySQL, RDBMS, and Hadoop, also uh, AWS Cloud Services. And in order to provide enterprise-level data analysis platform, we are focusing on the scalability and reliability and security. So every day, every second, we ingest 1 million records in our pipeline and process 30 trillion records per day by using open source softwares. And also, we are providing a secure platform. So we, we are now achieving these kind of scalability and reliability, but still have a lot of um, problems in terms of the operations. So we are, in this presentation, I'm going to provide some challenges and solutions in terms of this context. And as I said, uh, ARM Treasure Data is now part of the ARM Perion platform. So in addition to normal digital marketing logs or e-commerce logs, we are now collecting several kind of data from the IoT devices like uh, automobiles or any kind of uh, format. So in also, we need to provide more efficient data processing platform without much less uh, cost. So what is distributed data analysis in this talk we are interested in? So there are, uh, in, in my opinion, there are mainly three key items about distributed data analysis. So first one is the most important one, scalability. So distributed data analysis platform should be easy to should, should be easy to scale horizontally scalable, which means even if the data itself is growing much larger, we only we need to do is just adding more instances to the platform. So just paying more money that that makes it, it easy to process more larger data. And also, uh, which is also needed to be scalable in terms of the interface, like some people want to use our platform by writing SQL, or some people want to import uh, data in a message pack format or Avro format. So we need to be flexible to the several kind of data format or interfaces. And also, uh, we need to achieve high throughput by using the distributed data analysis platform. So, which is a scale, scale that is impossible with only a single node machine. And uh, some customer wants to finish their jobs in one day or in hour. So we need to keep high throughput in order to meet their business requirement. And last but not least, uh, data consistency is also important even in the distributed big data analysis platform. Otherwise, uh, we cannot do right side operations like insert, delete, or update. And correct measurement is uh, very important in the enterprise level data analysis because some number or calculation is wrong, their decision will also wrong. So we needed to keep data consistent. And fortunately, uh, there are a bunch of open source softwares for to achieve this uh, purpose is available for distributed processing. As you know, Apache Hadoop is the most famous one. Uh, this project born in the m over 10 years ago, and this is still active, one of the still active project in the big data analysis field. And Apache, uh, Apache Spark and Presto is a kind of Hadoop, but 
this processing is completely on memory, so it can be much faster than the Hadoop. And the Kafka is a, a little bit different, but it can also uh, it it is a skewing system uh, in a distributed manner. So, and these all systems is uh, according to this typical architecture master worker model. So each system has one master node and several kind of several multiple ins worker instances. Usually, uh, one job request will be passed to the master node, and master node will process the request and create a logical execution plan and distribute it physical execution plan, and also sa do some kind of optimization to the query much faster. And then uh, each job will be distributed as a fragmented tasks to the multiple worker node so that uh, we can process one job in a distributed manner. So the important point is master node is only one in the cluster and we have several multiple worker node in a cluster. So if we want to scale the cluster, uh, we can add more worker node in the cluster, not master work, master node. So why can we achieve high performance by just distributing? So for example, this is the distributing plan example. If a customer user submit a query like this, uh, this plan this query will be interpreted and optimized into the right distributed plan. So in this uh, task fragment can be run in completely in parallel manner on the multiple worker node. So we can achieve much high performance uh, which cannot be achievable uh, by just using single node machine. So thanks to the bunch of open source, uh, efficient open source software like Apache Hadoop, we can achieve much high performance in the distributed data analysis field. But uh, still, we have challenges in the production environment. So mainly there are three challenges we have. Uh, maintaining distributed data analysis platform in a real world production environment is still not easy. One biggest problem is operation. We need to deploy specific package or a version of the software into multiple instances without any error, or we need to make sure same version packages need to be deployed in the multiple instances. And also, uh, logging investigation is tough because if some problem happens, we need to investigate which node has a problem and we need to go to that instance to investigate the log. So if the log is distributed, uh, it is hard to detect which instances has a problem. So yeah, monitoring is also not easy. And money, so in order to process large scale data set, we need to add more instances. But uh, in, as you know, uh, usually public cloud services is a pay on demand style, uh, style. So we need to pay more money if we add more instances. So we want to save our cost, money cost as much as possible. And even keeping our cost low, um, we also need to achieve high stability in order to avoid unsatisfaction of our customers so that they can achieve, they can process their workload in a specific time range. So there are several multiple uh, problems in the distributed data analysis. And the most important one is we need to 
do this kind of things by manual. So every time we need to scale the cluster, we need to calculate how much instances we need to add or which version should be deployed in this cluster or how much we need to pay more if we add these instances. So we need to always calculate these, these kind of things by our hand or by our brain. So I, we want, what we want to do is, do is doing these kind of things by automatically. So the, here is the, our approach to solve these challenges. Basically, for, uh, there are four things to solve these challenges. Uh, and all are based on the public cloud services like AWS Code Deploy and EC2 Auto Scaling Group. So first, uh, AWS Code Deploy. Code Deploy is a deployment service for a built on top of AWS. And all we need to do is just archive our software into a zip format and just upload to S3. So then Code Deploy system will automatically uh, deploy this package into multiple servers uh, in a scalable manner. So there are several benefits to use the Code Deploy. One is availability. So Code Deploy system is available in every region and every public cloud services. So we are providing our services in uh, multiple regions in Tokyo region or US region and the EU region. So uh, providing same kind, same services in a multiple region is a very important factor to decide to use this code deploy. And also code deploy supports on-premise on instances so that we can deploy same package to non-AWS instances like our on-premise instances or instances on the other cloud. And it's proven to be the scalable for distributed system use cases like our use cases. So we can easily use AWS Code Deploy to use our packages to deploy Hadoop, uh, Hadoop softwares or Presto into our multiple cluster nodes. And also we are using auto scaling system to scaling uh, as the name suggested, we want to scale our system by automatically. So one good, there are three points to, uh, to, ina to achieve to integrate auto scale system in our platform. So first one is load test by query simulation. I am going to talk later. And second one is metric based capacity system, uh, capacity estimation. And then the last one is uh, instance termination by grace free or force, force manner. The first one is query simulation. So in order to, uh, in order to uh, calculate how many instances we need to add or how ca what kind of a metric do we need to monitor? Uh, we cannot use our production system for testing these kind of configuration change. So we created the query simulation system to test our configuration change without deploying uh, into a production system. So here is uh, how it works. So first, we already have uh, or production system query metrics into our log system. So this includes the query signature or customer ID, uh, CPU time usage or memory usage. So these various kind of information is already available. And first uh, get these metrics from our log system and we are creating, we are going to create a query signature by clustering, and then we uh, construct test query dataset based on the clustering uh, clustering result. And then uh, we are going to submit this query list to our 
test, create, test cluster in our non-production environment. So what is the query signature? So first, uh, I said we, are go we collect some metrics from our log collection database, and then we are going to create query signatures like this. Query signature is a shortened format to represent a feature of the query. And by using that, we can achieve, uh, we can represent the what kind of feature this query has and what kind of join I doing is, uh, what kind of uh, operation the query is doing so that we can do clustering of the query list uh, because submitting all query list into our production environment, uh, non-production environment is very time consuming. So we want to compress the test query set into smaller one. So in order to achieve that, we are going to clustering not to not to lose the diversity of the production environment workload. So we are going to calculate the query signature and by using that we are going we created the query cluster to be tested in our non-production environment. And after query cluster is created, we are going to submit uh, these queries into non-production cluster. So by you uh, by minimizing the time to taken for this query simulation, we use the C59X large so that we can get the much more parallelism to s simulate the production workload in non-production environment. The second one is metric-based capacity estimation. So in order to automate how to calculate the desired capacity of the cluster, we use metric-based capacity estimation. So how does it work? So first, the, let's assume the adding instance or reducing instance is proportional to the target metric value. So for example, if we set target value, CPU usage is 14%. Uh, if CPU passage increases 20%, so that 20%, we need to add 20% more capacity to the cluster. And if the CPU usage decreases 20%, we can reduce the cluster capacity 20%. So that is the assumption of a metric-based capacity estimation. And this chart shows the, uh, how CPU usage is transitioned based on the, our query simulations. So uh, horizontal axis is the uh, date time and vertical axis shows the CPU usage. And if we set the target average CPU usage 40%, the above one shows the time when we need to add more instances. And the below one, from the 40%, uh, which is indicates the time when we can reduce the instances from the cluster. So by using this metric-based capacity estimations, we can know how much, how many instances we can add or how ma many instances we can reduce from the cluster. And in order to achieve the low cost, uh, money cost, we also calculate the what is the best target value or in terms of the CPU usage. So in this chart shows the 40% is the most balanced one. The horizontal axis is the target value, target value, target average CPU usage, and the vertical one is the cost reduction. So if we set the higher target value, like 80% CPU usage, we can we can reduce more cost up to 50%, but uh, because we can keep each instance is more busy 
up to 80% CP usage. But on the other hand, if we can set lower CP usage like 20%, we need to pay more money up to double because we need to keep each instance is more uh, more less busy. So 40% is the most balanced one. We can achieve a good balance between cost and performance. And last but not least is the graceful termination and instance termination is important. So graceful termination is a way to inst terminate instance in a graceful manner, which means so to avoid affecting customer experience. So if we terminate instance without gracefully, so each query running in the cluster will be failed. So in order to avoid these situations, we created uh, mechanisms to achieve graceful termination in uh, auto-scaling group in AWS. So we use lifecycle hook on auto-scaling group in this lifecycle hook, uh, cron job is running in the EC2 instance to check the current number of tasks in the instance. So even if auto scaling group will try to terminate the instance, uh, this cron job won't complete the lifecycle hook unless every task will be finished in the instance, so that we can make sure all tasks will be finished before the instance will be terminated by the auto scaling group. So by using this graceful auto termination mechanisms, we can keep our customer queries running even if we want to terminate the instance. So instance, if we request to terminate this instance, uh, instance is moved to terminating wait status by auto scaling group, but cron job will work periodically check the current number of tasks in the instance, and if all tasks is finished, uh, it will go to the terminating proceed state, and then auto scaling group will terminate the instance uh, gracefully. So that's the mechanism to race free terminates the instance in the auto scaling group. But there is one problem about the graceful termination. Uh, that is the long running jobs. So some jobs run the over one hour or several hours. So if we are keep keep waiting for the long running jobs, we cannot terminate these instances. And at the end, uh, that can result in the cost increase. So we want to terminate some instances in uh, some specific time period, like uh, it's, it's a kind of timeout time limitations. So how long we can run these instances, even if a long running jobs is running on the instance? So here is uh, our result based on our query simulations. So uh, horizontal axis is date time and the vertical one is the uh, time, how long it will take to terminate gracefully. So blue one is the uh, 10 minutes and red one is 30 minutes and yellow one is more. So as this chart shows, uh, we can terminate over 19% instances in 10 minutes because uh, blue area is the 19% over 19% in total. So that indicates we can set timeout in 10 minutes so that we can terminate every uh, we can terminate over 19% instance in 10 minutes and some jobs will fail because of the false terminations, but we can make sure over 19% queries will be keep running and that not avoid uh, that not affect customer expectations. So graceful terminations and false termination is the balance between 
money cost and our customer satisfactions. So here is a recap. Uh, I introduced our treasure data and we defined a distributed data analysis. We are interested in this topic and what kind of challenges we have about operational cost, money cost, and also we need to keep stability without losing the customer expectations, satisfaction. And we introduced several approaches uh, using AWS Call Deploy and Auth Scaling Group. And also based on our query simulations, we calculate some configurations best for our graceful and false termination of the instances. Thank you so much.